Okay, here we go. Digestion lab. All right, so you should have a list of structures uh, that you can download. And I'm just going to go through these pictures. There's a bunch of different pictures from different models. And so from each picture, I'm just going to try to identify as many structures as I can. Um, and hopefully I will hit them all. And you've also got the videos with Miss Graham. So don't forget to look at those as well. All right. So we're doing the digestive system, so we're going to look at the uh, alimentary canal, which is going to be from the mouth through the anus, okay, and all the structures in between, and also the accessory organs, which is going to be those things that are not part of that tube, but that uh, secrete things into that tube, like the salivary glands, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Everything else from the mouth all the way through the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine are all one continuous tube. Okay, so uh, this is going to be an image from your book that's labeled. I also found uh, this image uh, of a model of just the digestive system where everything is labeled, so you have this uh, as reference as well. And then here's another picture not labeled. So what you would want to do is be able to think about tracing the food from the top to the bottom by going into the mouth, uh, over the tongue, into the pharynx, down into the esophagus, into the stomach, okay? This is your small intestine. We'll talk about the different parts of the small intestine in just a second. Uh, this is your large intestine. We'll talk about the different parts of the large intestine. The end of the large intestine is called the rectum and then out the anus. Uh, things that are adding juices to the digestive system include your salivary glands and your liver and your gallbladder and your pancreas. Okay, so you should be able to uh, take this information and uh, extrapolate and label this model. So those salivary glands, uh, this one is your parotid salivary gland. It's going to be located right here. You have a submandibular, which means it's underneath the mandible. That's a salivary gland on both sides. Here is that submandibular gland here. And then you have a sublingual gland. And you can actually see the duct that takes the spit or the saliva into the oral cavity, into the mouth. Obviously, teeth are part of the digestive system, so that's included as well. Um, here is another view of the parotid salivary gland with its duct. Here is the uh, uh, submandibular glands here and sublingual glands here. And you can see the ducts running from the sublingual gland and from the submandibular gland and here is a big tooth and here's your mouth and here's your tongue these are all things that are fair game for me to ask you because they all have to do with digestion here's another view uh, don't forget about your hard palate and your soft palate the, the tip of the soft palate is called the uvula well u v l <laughs> that's the back of the uh, of the soft palate here's the tongue um, this tube right here, that's the esophagus. Don't get that confused with the trachea. All right. Uh, go back and think about taste and the sensations in the tongue. So remember you have the tongue and you have papilla, which is going to be where the taste buds are. So you have that circumvallate pati pati uh, phthalate papilla, that was a little fungiform uh, papilla. Then you also have a little foliate papilla along the side. Uh, these are your tonsils, your lingual tonsils that are found on the back of your tongue. Just kind of reviewing. So anything that we've covered in the past, uh, when we, if we've talked about it with uh, special senses or respiration, it's kind of fair game. Uh, we're going to talk about the teeth. And remember you have baby teeth, which are the ones that fall out, called deciduous teeth. And you have permanent teeth, which are the ones that you have um, forever. You have 20 deciduous teeth and 32 permanent teeth. And uh, you'll need to be able to recognize the difference between your incisors, which are their, your tizzle teeth, so your incisors. You'll need to recognize your canine teeth, which are the pointy ones on kind of a, on the sides, on top and bottom. Your premolars, which are your starting to be your crushing and grinding teeth. And then your molars on the back, which are your big grinding teeth. Um, if you're a dentist and you want to learn how um, when they go through, and if you may have noticed that when you go to the dentist, they, they kind of tap each tooth and they're counting. And so each tooth has a number. And so the upper right wisdom tooth 
is number 1. Okay, so it goes 1 all the way to 16, and then you come down, and then you have 17 over to 32. So it starts upper right, goes across, and then you come down, and then the lower left wisdom teeth is number 32. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 32. All right, that's how that works. So uh, if I, I may say, okay, what tooth is that? You have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So be able to count that. All right, so just be able to count your teeth. So start from the upper right and then wind back up at the at the lower um, um, lower right. I think I said lower left, lower right. Sorry, you wind up on the same side. It goes over, down, and back across. All right, um, let's see. Trying to make sure I hit all my notes. All right. So upper right, all the way across, down, back to the lower right. Gotcha. Uh, just quickly understand the different parts of the tooth. Uh, you have the root, which is what goes down into the bone, the neck, which is surrounded by gum. What's above the gum is called the crown. It's covered in a dense material called enamel. Uh, this blue stuff is called dentin. In the middle, you have uh, the root, which is where your artery and vein and nerve are. Uh, again, you should be able to look at these and be able to count the teeth and come up with the numbers and know which ones are the incisors versus the canines and your premolars and your molars. There's your uvula, which is going to be the back of the soft palate, the hard palate, going to be right behind your, your teeth here. Here's your tongue. Understand that this is your upper jaw and this is your lower lower jaw, so your maxilla and your mandible, okay, so you should be able to remember that. Um, so then you're going to take that food from the mouth and take it down into the digestive system. So this is what the model is going to look like when everything's put together and we're going to start pulling apart and kind of see what's behind there. So here is your liver, here's your gallbladder, here's your stomach, this uh, yellowish stuff is your small intestine, the gray stuff is your large intestine, okay. Uh, just a closer up picture of that where you have your liver, gallbladder, stomach, large intestine, and small intestine. And we'll talk about uh, different parts in just a minute. You can also see this red tube here. That's your aorta. And just next to it, that's going to be your esophagus. So that little yellow tube that's going to be going down uh, from your mouth to your abdomen is your esophagus. Here's another view of the esophagus and the aorta. Um, here is the We've taken all the organs out. Here is your pancreas, and you can see the little pancreatic ducts. Uh, here is the first part of the small intestine, which is called the duodenum. This little uh, kind of comma-shaped organ right there, that's the first part. Your small intestine is made up of the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. So this part that kind of hooks around the pancreas is called the duodenum, and it's really easy to identify, especially on a model like this, where it's just kind of by itself hooked around the pancreas. Here's another model that shows you the esophagus going into the stomach, and this is cutaway of the stomach, so you can see the rugi. So all this little wavy stuff inside the stomach is called the rugi. And the top of the stomach is called the fundus. Um, and then you have uh, the body and the pylorus, so this main portion is called the body, and then the, the very inferior section is called the pylorus. So let's see. This is where the esophagus comes in. This would be your fundus. This is the body. And this is the pylorus. Okay? Because that's going to go off into the small intestine. Here's another view of that where you can see the rugi inside those, those wavy lines. So this is going to be the, the pathway of food. Um, this is going to be how it gets out to the small intestine. So the fundus is over here. This is the body. And then over here is the pylorus. Uh, here's your liver looking at it. Uh, this is going to be your right lobe. This is your left lobe looking at it from the front. Your gallbladder is peeking out down and behind it. Turn it around. Uh, this is going to be the right. This is going to be the left. This is the caudate lobe and this is going to be the quadrate lobe. Okay, so right lobe, left lobe, quadrate lobe, uh, I mean caudate lobe and quadrate lobe because it looks like a square. Uh, this is your gallbladder. 
and we're going to name uh, the uh, tubes that go to the gallbladder. So if it's coming from, if it's making bile and coming from the left side, that's the left um, hepatic duct. If it's coming um, from the right, that's the right hepatic duct. They come together and make the common hepatic duct. And then this is going to go down into the small intestine, and that's called the common bile duct, or the bile duct. The duct that connects the gallbladder to the bile duct is called the cystic duct. All right, you can see this purple thing. That means the blood that's returning from the liver goes to the hepatic, or the blood that's going to the liver from the small intestine, the large intestine, and the stomach and the spleen. This is part of that hepatic portal system. Okay, this is your inferior vena cava. All right, so another picture. You have your liver here. Here's your gallbladder. Uh, here's your duodenum here. Here is your pancreas. You can see the pancreatic ducts, which are exocrine. That means they make stuff and they release it through a duct to an opening. So they're going to release their stuff right here. You can see the gallbladder. Here's one of your, here's your right hepatic duct and your left one's over here. They join together to form the common hepatic duct. The cystic duct and the common duct come together to form the bile duct. The bile duct and the pancreatic duct come together and empty out into the duodenum. And that's the spleen, not part of the digestive system, but that's what that is. Here's another view of this. So you can see the fundus, the body, and the pyloric area. This is the pyloric sphincter, so this is the pylorus of the stomach. It's going to empty into the duodenum. Here you have your pancreas again with your pancreatic ducts. And the pancreatic ducts actually split into an upper and a lower, so there's one that empties here, and then one that joins the common bile duct, the bile duct from the uh, gallbladder, and they empty in here. Here you have your gallbladder. You've got your left, and let me change colors. Oops. You have your two hepatic ducts there, left and right, they join to form the common hepatic duct. The cystic duct and the common hepatic duct join to form the bile duct. The bile duct goes around and comes here, joins the pancreatic ducts and empties into the duodenum. Here's another uh, um, view of this. Again, you've got your hepatic portal vein. Um, you've got your gallbladder here. You've got your quadrate lobe of the liver. You've got your right and left hepatic ducts coming in, forming this common hepatic duct. Cystic duct, these come together and form the bile duct. Okay, and just one more view where you can see the, the gallbladder here, the cystic duct. You can see that bile duct coming around, joining the pancreatic ducts, and you can see where they empty in here, and the other smaller pancreatic duct empties in here. Um. Let's see, there's, don't want to miss anything. Okay. All right, um, just one more view to show you, uh, again, the pancreas and how it, how it kind of falls in uh, with the duodenum. Just another image, you can see the, the portal system right here. See the common the uh, the bile duct coming in here to join the uh, pancreatic duct. Another view, just to let you have as many views with as many models as I ca as I can. So try to make it easier for you on the exam. So pancreas, duodenum, pancreatic ducts, and then the bile duct. Uh, this is a view of the intestines, and so the gray is going to be your large intestine. All the pink stuff is small intestine. Um, the models are not real good at, deter at really distinguishing between jejunum and ileum. So if it's toward the top, assume it's jejunum. If it's toward the bottom, consider it's the uh, ileum. Um, and definitely, if you can see that it's joining into the large intestine right here. This is the ileocecal valve, where the ileum is joining the cecum of the large intestine. So this is definitely ileum here. Um, this is going to be the cecum, which is the lowest part of the, of the uh, large intestine. This is the omentum. There's like a, a sheet of uh, connective tissue and kind of fat that covers the small intestine. So some of our models show that omentum. 
which is just uh, kind of a partitioning of the of the of the abdominal uh, cavity. It kind of uh, surrounds and partitions off that part of the uh, digestive tract. Here is another version of the intestines. So this all would be jejunum. This would all be ileum. This is going to be your large intestine. So the uh, the waste matter is going to come in. This is going to be the cecum. It's going to go this way, which makes that the ascending colon. It's going to go across, making that the transverse colon. And it's going to come down, making that the descending colon. Most of this has been done in 201, so most of this should be reviewed. Uh, just another view. So again, uh, if it's the kind of the top portion, this is going to be jejunum of the small intestine. Down here, where it's entering into the large intestine, is going to be ileum. Here's your cecum again. Uh, this is your appendix, kind of hanging off the, the uh, cecum. You can see the appendix, ascending colon. We've removed the transverse colon so that you can see that it sits right in front of the pancreas. And you can see the duodenum is right there. So that transverse colon has been taken away. It kind of sits in front of uh, the pancreas and the duodenum. Here's your descending colon. It's going to make a little S-shaped curve back in there. That's your sigmoid colon. Uh, just another view to show you how the pancreas, duodenum, and large and small intestine all fit together. You can see this is going to be the terminal or pyloric end of the stomach so that the food or chyme is going to travel in that direction into the digestive system, into the small intestine. Here we've taken out the small intestine. So you can see uh, where the ileocecal valve is. This is where the duodenum joins the jejunum. So this is going to be all small intestine that they've taken away and kind of taken away so that you can't see it. Um, here's the cecum, the appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, the straight area is called the rectum, and then it exits through the anus. It's another uh, version of the same thing. Uh, this shows you the mesentery, which is that kind of uh, sheet of connective tissue that has all your vessels in it. So you can see your mesentery as part of your um, large intestine. Again, here's your appendix. So we know that's kind of at the start of the large intestine. So ascending, they've removed the transverse, descending, sigmoid, rectum, and then through the anus, which is the exit point. This is looking at it from the back side because we can see our small intestine. So the appendix is over here this time. I did this on purpose because uh, I don't want you to get in the habit of going, oh, the ascending's on this side and the descending's on this side. You've got to find the appendix. Okay, so in this case, because you're looking at it from the back side, this is the ascending colon, then the transverse colon and the descending colon. Okay, so that was a tricky one, I just, but I did it on purpose. Look for that appendix, and that'll tell you if you're on the ascending or descending side. Appendix starts with A, ascending starts with A. Put them together. And then this will be the straight rectus, uh, rectum, which is the last portion of the colon. Here's another version. You would cut away. So you see inside the rectum, here is the anus. All right. Um, you need to get some, um, uh, look in your textbook. I'll use some diagrams to look at the sphincter muscles on the males and the females, and you can see the external and internal sphincter muscles uh, around this portion as well. So I usually use a diagram for that, so check out your, your textbook for the diagrams of the internal and external anal sphincters. So make sure you do that. And I think I got it. That's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. So between this video and Ms. Graham's video and your list of structures and your textbook, you should be able to figure all this out because most of it's pretty good review. Also, when you watch the lecture videos, I go over it again because I want to explain as, as food is passing through the body. Um, I go over these structures again. So you will see these lab structures several different times. All right, that's it. That was the last lab. Thanks a lot. See ya.